great. What about you guys? Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And my name is Sophia Rosinski, and I play Mac, and we're on Amazon's Paper Girls. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So, my first question for you, I think you guys embody your characters really well. You do a really great job on the show. Is there anything that you guys have had any challenges kind of portraying, um, or any characteristics you guys have found challenges? Uh, hmm. Uh, for me, I, I can't say there was a specific thing. I think just just making sure I was brought up in the Meisner technique, so just living truthfully under imaginary circumstances, understanding who the character is, where she comes from, and just listening and reacting. So I can't I can't pinpoint a specific thing. I don't think. I would say that there wasn't like a specific thing about Tiff that I really had to get accustomed to, but I can say that just like she said, being in Tiff was the challenge in itself because just making sure that I was in it was a big part of my day each time I came to set. Actually, I guess I actually I guess the only thing that it would be would probably be using so much bad language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sophia does not cuss at all. I can tell you that. She does not cuss at all. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Mac has been brought up in an environment where she has had to sort of construct a very hard shell for herself in order to survive. But when she's exposed to these other girls, they have a really positive influence on her and she doesn't need that shell as much. And I think it's really interesting to get to see her sort of shed that because there's so much, she's a far more complex creature than she lets on. And there's, there's more to her than just an abrasive, uh, foul-mouthed little street rat. <laughs> I watched a lot of movies and I listened to some music. Like, I, I watched like Coming to America and Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. I tried to like get into. T <laughs> <laughs> so good. I loved when he kept he, when he caught the bullet with the seed. But uh, besides the point, um, I um. I tried to get into what I thought Tiff would like as the character, and I think Tiff would be really into sci-fi and really into that out of this world fantasy. Like, and I also thought she would really like Salt and Peppa and Prince and stuff. So I would research stuff like that to really try to get into Tiff's point of view of the '80s. For me, I I've been brought up around a lot of '80s culture, so it was it was kind of a nice, smooth transition for me, and it was just really fascinating to actually be dropped into it. For me, I would say, like Cameron, listening to some of the kind of stuff that I think Mac would listen to, music-wise, watched a few movies, and just like Cameron, yeah, I absolutely agree, same. Also, the comics were a really great, like, reference, because those were made by people who were alive in the 80s, so <laughs> that was great. For me, uh, for me, I sort of constructed, I guess, my own interpretation of Mac, following the script with infusions of the Mac in the comic book series, who I love. And for me, I was reading each comic book during filming, and I was trying to savor that as much as possible. I remember trying to turn the pages as slowly as possible, just because I wanted, I wanted to draw it out, let it last as long as possible. But for me, it was just sort of taking the comic book Mac and the script Mac, and then kind of meshing them and creating someone out of both of those sources. I did reference the comic books a lot because for me there was no better like 
material than the source of what Paper Girls is. And I actually kept like I kept the comic books in my trailer on set. And like if she there was a scene that was really like straight out of the comics, I wanted to look back on it. I would try to recreate it like the comics. But I feel like we both put ourselves into our characters. So while bringing the comic book character to life, there's a bit of us in there with that. And yeah. See, the comics and the show, the relationships are so crucial to the story. How do you build your relationships with your fellow cast members to match the relationships of the characters? Lots of ice cream and lots of laser tag. <laughs> Yeah, because we would get ice cream like every weekend or for like minor, major celebrations. And then we played laser tag in the hotel while we were on location all the time. So. And even just being in these tightly packed, uh, intense scenes with each other was sort of a, a way that we formed bonds. It was kind of like an apocalypse boot camp. Yeah. So we were thrown thrown into a room with each other and we, as our characters developed, like Emma was saying, as our characters started to know each other, we worked as well. So I guess sort of a natural chemistry form. Also the nine hours a day for five months straight with <laughs> these guys helped. Seeing, seeing these guys' faces every day, yeah. Hmm. For me, yeah. I think Paper Girls really opened up a lot of philosophical questions for me because it was like, what if I don't like who I become? Would I be content if they were different than what I picture now? It opened a lot of those questions for me, but I think being Tiff also helped me realize as long as future me is happy, I'm good. So it opened up the questions, but it also answered them. That's a really nice statement. <laughs> that as long as I'm future me is happy, I'm good. I really like that. I really like that. I'm going to piggyback on what she just said because that was re really good. Hmm. Okay, like physically where they end up or just in their arts? Okay. All right, I'm going to say. I would say companionship because Tiff kind of starts off the season as lonely because only child, her parents work all the time, and I think by the end of this season she really forms this like famili familial relationship with the girls, and I would say that's where she ends up. Okay. I will. I'll quickly. I'll quickly just say this. I'm gonna say, in a sense, courage. Because in the beginning of the, the series, we see she, she has a lot of, she's got a lot of nerve. She, she gets herself into some dangerous situations at times, but she always approaches it with a certain aggression. But the courage that she develops at the end of the series is more of, she's able to forgive, and she's able to move forward, and she's able to let down her guard a little bit, and I think that takes a lot of courage. I'm going to try to hit the Marvel panel tomorrow, but mm. if the Hall H line is too long, which it probably will be, it'll be out the door, people are camping out tonight, I think I'm just going to go scope out the floor because my family's here, and it's all of our first Comic Con, so I think we're all going to go explore together. Yeah, I think just, just seeing, looking out for costumes and just seeing how they've been constructing all of this, that's sort of my plan, just strolling up and down, just taking it all in. I also want to ride on the Paper Girls train. Oh yeah, the the pe oh or and the, the pedicab. Yeah, the, yeah, the car, the pedicab, not the pedicar. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.